Hello again everyone and welcome back to The Witcher 2. We are back here on Vernon Roach's boat and we need to follow the riverbank to Flotsam. We're doing some reconnaissance apparently. Now? Witcher, we're waiting. Oh. Everything all right, Geralt? Everything is fine. Ah, come on already. Right, let's take a stroll down there. Tamirian Special Forces warship. How are you? As cold as hell. Come on, Witcher. Water's cold as hell. Yeah, I'm carrying too much weight. Oh, good lord, we are. We are carrying far too much. Okay, so we need to drop a few things then. So we've got our longsword. Uh, do we still have the grizzam? I mean, the longsword is probably more manageable, so we'll 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 keep that. Do we have a silver sword? Don't think we do. It's all. Steel. Armor. We do have a blue stripes combat jacket. That's good. That's something. Quilted leather. Quilted leather is actually quite good, but the stripes combat jacket is definitely better. We've actually got our regular arm back now, haven't we? Which is helpful. Can we enhance our things at all, potentially? Armor enhancement? We can use that. Yep. Yep, there we go. So we've boosted our armor a little bit. Conflagration trap, we'll put that in. Sane and bomb. We'd need to, we need to get rid of a lot of this stuff, to be honest with you. Mutagen. Uh, d -d 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 load of crafting stuff we have. We have five bindings, which are complete junk. So we'll just drop all five of them. Uh, we do need to... Come on already. All right, all right. Yeah, we definitely need to start dropping things, because this is getting a bit out of hand. I think, obviously, we've been given back a lot of the stuff that, that, that we lost, I think. Or at least gifted good quality things, and now we are just overwhelmed with items. Uh, oh, Tamirian! Ah, no, oh, yeah, that's 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 better. The Tamirian sword. We'll equip the Tamirian sword. I mean, it's common, but still, a, a pickaxe, daggers. I I do not like the idea of running around wielding a pickaxe. Uh, we'll drop our club and our pickaxe. We are just chucking a lot of stuff on the floor, but what? at the end of the day, we we need we need Witches to get to get some weight. Greetings. Not yet. This. How goes it? You just Witches? will. Hello. Come on, Witcher. Hello. Right, let's um, open our inventory here. Uh, no, let's not open our inventory. Let's open our character screen. That's where we need to be. So this is the last level where we have to take the training path. Um, can we mutate this? We can. Yeah. Armor plus one. Mutate ability. There we go. Damage reduction plus one. So, Vigor, uh, uh, Parrying. Yeah, we'll upgrade that. Parrying is good. Come on already. Right, let's go. Let's actually move. I'm not exactly sure how we're meant to run Which around. Is is gonna have to get wet. New journal entry, Flots and Forests. Yeah, well, let's, let's check our journal, actually. Vernon Roche's ship finally reached the vicinity of Flotsam, a training post governed by Commander Laredo. Roche wants to meet his informant, yet unsure of the commander's loyalties, chose not to dock in the harbour, but rather to land on a beach and conduct a bit of reconnaissance before bringing the ship in. He took to, he took to scouting in the company of Geralt and Triss. A witcher stripped of his monster fighting sword is like a dwarf without a beard. Geralt's silver, silver blade had flown off with the dragon just after their memorable encounter on the walls of Lavalette Castle. Oh, of course, because he, he, he stabbed it, didn't, didn't he? So our hero needed a new one. The beast, the best though certainly not the only way to acquire one, was to have it forged by the dwarf blacksmith who had a workshop in Flotsam's non-human district. Okay. Right. Um, 
Fortes were not so lucky the second time, having dropped his guard, the Witcher was caught by a surprise and the King died at the hands of an assassin. The murderer was also a mutant, similar in garb and behaviour to the previous assassin. Furthermore, he seemed to recognise Geralt. Sadly, the King Slayer escaped, and our hero was blamed for the monarch's death. First imprisoned and now pursued for, for a crime he did not commit, the Witcher was sailing up to the Pontar River towards the town of Flotsam. Geralt wanted to clear his name and was intrigued by the, by the Witcher-like assassins. Our hero needed to solve the mystery of the King Slayers, and a certain informant of the Tamir Intelligence Service was to help him in that. A certain Vernon Roach. Geralt was free, he rushed towards the riverboat of the special forces, his head a jumble of questions, Triss Marigold and Vernon Roach awaited him on board the vessel, but alas they had no answers. Future events would shed the light on the mystery, but let's not get ahead of ourselves. <whistles> when you boys held the Witcher might sneak aboard un unmolested, and saw the advice he had offered the Reaver in passing and now saved his own life. Good! Flotsam Forest. The wilderness surrounding Flotsam was a thick, impassable wood where inexperienced travellers could easily lose their way and fall victim to wild beasts, or even more probably, elven arrows. A rarely used, thickly overgrown route to route led to Aedern, but given the forest dangers, most travellers preferred to journey by river. Right. For those reasons, after Fortes' death, the sorceress decided that she would help the Witcher most by staying by his side, not heeding her threatened position at court. She harnessed all her strength and powers to helping Geralt, whom she still had feelings to. Of course she does. Right. Continuing his private investigation, Verna headed for the Tamirian Edenian border, where he expected to find clues to the Kingslayer's whereabouts. Uh, thanks to his very best informant, Roach knew that the uh, knew that the man could have been hiding among the Scointel, located in the vicinity of Fotsima Trading Post. Thus, where the Royal Hound Vernon Roach was on the hunt once more. Right, Demavend is a new one on on us, I think. Demavend, the son of. Verfril ruled the kingdom of Aedirn, which was mightily aggrieved, aggrieved during the last war with Nilfgaard. A proponent of authoritarian rule, he was seen as having no love for non-humans. He often moved radically against the Scoia'tael, though he drooled in spite of himself when the guerrillas pe perpetrated the massacres on his own people, as these justified the punitive expeditions he delighted in sending into the foothills of Dol Blathana. He also showed no shyness towards imprisoning and torturing rabble rousers and street prophets who would interfere in his politics. Thus, it is no wonder that many could not wait to see him dead. In spite of this, his subjects could not help it, but, 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 but their words, but be surprised by his death, for it is not every day that a crowned head paints the palace floor with its blood. Ah, uh, there's the dragon. Okay. Uh, oh, we actually have we actually have a glossary on geography as well. Ada, and this realm is bordered by. Um, we actually read that. Right. Anyone who wishes to be considered an educated man rather than a common boor should mention Tamiria first, where the Northern Kingdoms are concerned. The realm's coat of arms is a black shield dotted with a silver fleur de lis, and its capital is Bazima, where the royal palace erected by King Faltes stands. The country extends its protection to several surrounding domains, including the, mo the mountainous dwarven homeland of, of Mahakam. Currently, Tamiria's neighbours include the mighty Redani, the wooded Cadwin, and Sidaris, known for the truly pathetic poetry of Valdo Marx. A troubadour unworthy of the title, for he chiefly devotes himself to besmirching the work of other superior artists. Probably down the line. Two other places in Tamir are essential to our story and thus must be mentioned. Firstly, the north of Azima, near the White Bridge that links the banks of the Pontar, stands the proud fortress and walled town of the Lavalette family. Secondly, further up the Pontar lies the small river port and trading post of Flotsam. Both will prove important to the beginning of our story, well we know that now. Situated between the Bra River in the north and the Pontar in the south, Redania is one of the north's more important kingdoms. Its coat of arms is a crowned silver eagle on a red field. The eagle grips a golden scepter in its talons and a small black shield bearing a golden cross adorns its proudly protruding chest. Despite recent unrest, the country survived. Unscathed and intact, the crisis that followed the death of King Visimir the Just, Tretagor, King... Uh, Radovid's seat of power is the country's capital, th the, though the free city of Novigrad is its largest population centre. I know Novigrad from The Witcher 3, I believe that's... Um, I've not played The Witcher 3, but I've heard of it in relation to The Witcher 3, I should say. Um, in fact, Nov Novigrad is something akin to the capital of the world, a centre and cradle of commerce and culture, where an enlightened man can breathe his fill as long as he does so away from the back alleys. Old, musty and... A scholarly Oxenford, the home of this author's alma mater, is another of the kingdom's noteworthy cities. During the last war with Nilfgaard, Redania joined with Tamiria, Ada, and Cadwin, and other northern realms to repel the invaders. 
and the Royal Redanian Corps played an important part during the Battle of Brenner. And then Caedwin. The formidable ranges of the Blue, Kestrel and Fiery Mountains define the eastern and western boundaries of the densely forested, cold and harsh domain of Caedwin, whose coat of arms is a black unicorn rearing on a golden field. This, the realm's capital of Ard Karag was the seat of power of King Henselt, a man known for having a violent temper and pursuing radical policies towards non-humans. The latter could be attributed to the fact that Scoia'tael units consistently caused great injury to the wooded land and its inhabitants, launching many brutal guerrilla attacks. The local human populace responded with massacres perpetrated on the, on the assimilated elves and dwarves inhabiting, inhabiting the country's cities, and so hatred burned on and blood bred blood. Those who called for peace were accused of treason and often died at the hands of their kinfolk. Furthermore, Cadwin was involved in an age-old feud with neighbouring Adern over the territory of Lormark, and that conflict cast a pall over relations between the two countries. As you will clearly see, its echoes rang out in this story as well. Ooh. So Cadwin might, might be involved in this uh, tale at some point as well. Any news Interesting. The port's blocked. Some merchants have been held up for months. What about roads through the forest? Your best rules are fast. Which is Silver Sword. Yeah, we know all about your your Trouble. as well. Well, not all about him, but you know. Crafting diary and quest item. Um That was a journal entry, wasn't it? Which is Silver Sword. So uh, so we know how to craft one now at least. That's good. Excellent. Sir. Just got to stroll through the river. Not, well, not through the river. Triss, can you stop being such a bossy bee, please? Where are we? In a forest. Very funny. Yeah. <laughs> but who does it belong to? Your vest, maybe. I know more about the Pontar Valley than you think. For instance, I know that Foltest stole this land from Denavend a few years back. I believe you had a hand in that. Roach's silence just speaks volumes there, doesn't it? He's not interested in, it, interested in discussing that. I smell an elf. Oh yeah, you can hear like a flute being played. That's interesting. Mandrake root. Valis. Oh, yep, I can very clearly see the elf as well. That's Yorvath, I think. Can we That's help you? Vernon Roach, Special Forces Commander for the last four years, servant of the Temerian King. Responsible for the pacification of the Mahakaman foothills. Hunter of elves. Murderer of women and children. Vernon's got a rep Twice with the sky, tell us. for valor on the field of battle. Yorvith, a regular son of a whore. <laughs> I've long awaited our Slightly meeting. Slightly different introduction Make there. Make plans, set traps. And now you appear in my forest of your own volition. You aided the man who slew my king. King or beggar, what's the difference? One one less. Since when did the Scoia'tael hire professional killers to do their dirty work? A Dwan, even. You've fallen low. A hired killer, true. But in all certainty, he is no Dwan. Don't make a big deal of the race thing. Yet race is the very reason we fight. We have pointed ears, yours are rounded. We are few, yet long-lived. Your kind multiplies like vermin, though thankfully expires quickly. <laughs> Humans and elves alike, trying to prove one shape is better than the other. 400 years of killing over the mold of the Oracle. Actually kind of very appropriate. We're here for the Kingslayer. The Kingslayer's among you. We've come for him. Then our interests collide. The Kingslayer is under my protection, and I'll not hand over a guest. You're just another old elf in a young elf's skin, using clever words to mask an obvious truth. Obvious, you say? This is not about race or freedom, or even vengeance. You're here because someone powerful told you to be. Someone who's using you. They may wear a crown, carry a magic wand, or even lead a guild. But be sure of this. It's not about your freedom, your rights, or your ears. Nilfgaard plowed you once, now someone new does. 
Am oh, Geralt's hitting deep there. Those times are gone. No one will ever use the Square Tower game. Who are you addressing? Me? Yourself? Or the archers in those shrubs? Ah. Uh... Enough of this piss! Starling! Oh, Vernon, you. Uh oh. I think you've started something, Vernon. Nice. Yeah, they seem a little bit confused now. That ought to discourage them. Triss, are you alright? I'm lovely. Oh no, she is not coping well with that. Oh crap. I think she might have exerted herself big time. The there. They're coming. Are we gonna have to fire some sky cell? I think we are. Get up. The spell still work. Stay close. Attack Russian Triss reach Flotsam. Right, Vernon's carrying her to the boat. But Whoa! <laughs> Jesus Christ, Vernon. Please, please don't manhandle Triss. I'd really appreciate it if you didn't do that. Honestly. Nothing important, Triss. Right, good. Starting to think we'll make it. Wait. The barrier's waiting. Triss. Be quick! Give me a bit more magic. Just a little. Carol, kill them now. It's not got much left. Although we are chopping through the sky itself like like nothing at the minute, so. Yeah, arches are still all around us. Always got always got time for some herb picking though. Attacking. Great, we're near the town. The mage ain't with them. You guys are gonna want to back up because that town's gonna come down hard on you. Have they stopped? For now, probably. You know each other? Rather well. But he has amnesia. There he is. I actually took the Witcher by surprise when I killed Foltest. Fear not, Elf. I know Geralt. I know his weakness. Gone. Just like that. So the Kingslayer is still here. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Wow. Too many spells at once. You can die from that. Please don't See do that. that again. Yeah. The Kingslayer and Yorvith. You all in one piece? Who are you? I'm a witcher. Emirvar Emrys, spice merchant. A trader. Oh wow, he's, he's, he's got a... spices. Uh-huh. And the woman? My he's got a false we ID. barely escaped death. Be so kind as to tell us where we might get some An wealth. alias, that's the we'll one that's We'll explain everything later. For. Very well. Head for the market square. You might be in time for the execution. Some ne'er-do-wells are going to hang. A dwarf and some bard. There's also an inn and a brothel. Oh yeah, the brothel sounds especially interesting. <laughs> Take care now. Tr Triss is all about that brothel life. Spice merchant. More likely. We've got a new ability, Cover. So it's for the Kingslayer's trail in Flotsam. Right, so we've got something going here. Just outside Flotsam, Geralt saw Foltest murderer once more. The assassin was in the company of Yorvath, the commander of a Skytel unit. This was surely no coincidence, and as it would turn out later, the encounter was deliberately staged indeed. From that moment on, the Witcher began to wonder if he could use the Elven leads to get to the assassin. Yorvath did sound like he had doubt when we kind of ploughed the fact that obviously he's being used. So... 
Right, it's prudent to inform the reader that on account of his profession and personality traits, Vernon Rush had many enemies and possibly no friends at all. By many enemies, I mean a legion and not a weak one at that. In Flotsam alone, Rush counted Commander Laredo and the local LV unit's leader, uh, Yorveth, among, fo among his foes. The latter crossed our hero's path, and when a hunter of squirrels meets the gorilla's best-known leader, the pleasantries can only last so long. The elven partisans immediately attacked, attacked from hiding, and Geralt's company only avoided becoming arrow-riddled hedgehogs thanks to the Triss Marigold's presence of mind. Vernon Roach took the sorceress, exhausted by her, protect by her protective spell, into his arms, and Geralt covered the company with his sword. Leaving a trail of corpses behind, our heroes pushed towards Flotsam. At the town gates, our heroes were greeted by Temerian soldiers. Only then did the Skytel withdraw and the Witcher managed but a glimpse of the faces of, the, of Yorveth and the Kingslayer who accompanied him. Unable to confront their foe, the company proceeded to the town in search of Roach's informant. So the trail is not dead at least, which is good. Uh, we've leveled up as well. Fantastic. And we can now actually expand. Can we? Oh. I thought I I thought we were we were able to actually branch out after level five, but maybe not yet. That's fine. Uh, how would we vigor regeneration out of combat? Yeah, we'll we'll, we'll go for that. Um, journal. We're looking at broth. Brothel. Flotsam's brothel was one of the only two noteworthy attractions available to the visitors and locals, yet unlike the scaffold, the bordello kept regular hours, offered a regular repertoire, and had a regular staff. Flotsam, a river port and, and trading post, lies, lies along the upper course of the Ponta, among inaccessible forests in the valley that bears the river's name. Numerous trade routes meet here, and the Temerian Adanian uh, border is located nearby. Land travel in the region was arduous and dangerous, for Skytel units prowled the woods. However, as they say, elves like cats are shy of water, so most travellers and merchants choose to sail the, sail the river. Flat bottom barges, punts, scows, and even seagoing cogs visited the harbour, ferrying goods between Ada and Cadwin, Samaria, Redania, and Sidaris on the seashore. No wonder then that this, this ostensibly small outpost was of vital economic importance. He who controlled it drew immense profits from trade. At the start of our story, Flotsam belonged to Temeria, and its small garrison was tasked with enforcing the law and providing protection from, from river pirates, Skytel units, and monsters inhabiting the surrounding forests. Of which there was many. I was not there at the time, but I heard tales of the show of power Triss put out put on that beach near Flotsam. Though she was weakened and barely conscious, the sorceress managed to sustain a magical barrier, and and, and the three survived the Skytel arrows thanks to her. Geralt's got a lot to thank Triss for, genuinely. The list of Vernon Roach's achievements and heroic deeds was almost as long as the list of atrocities and depravities he had allegedly committed along the way. Is the fact that, as the scrawlings on the wall of the University of the Oxenfurt say, pacifying non-humans is like wallowing in mud. Everyone gets dirty, generally with blood. Yorveth. They say all elves are beautiful, that they are born thus. In Yorveth's case, someone set out to change this, marking his face with an ugly scar the elf partially hid beneath a crimson headscarf. Yorveth was a living legend, the elusive leader of a Skytel unit whose members gave no thought to laying down their arms and continued their war against humans. Stories of his, of his deeds, his deep hatred of, of Dwan painted him as more akin to a vengeful ghost than to an individual made of blood, bone and flesh. Certain sources claim that Yorvith was the Kingslayer's ally and thus involved in recent events, yet Geralt's first meeting with the elf brought few answers and ended with Skytel archers laying down a deadly barrage. Indeed, it seemed at the time that the elf had only ever answered the Witcher with arrows. In the eyes of some people like Laredo or Roach, Yorvith was a common criminal, his hands stained by the blood of innocence. Indeed, the list of those he had cut down in his fight for freedom could easily rival the number of ballads, romances, and ditties in my repertoire. <whistles> but I feel like he can maybe be won over in the uh, in the in the future potentially. Go to the town square and watch the execution. Right. So we're not going to do that yet. We are going to. We, we are. We can, we can save here. Brilliant. So that is the game saved. So thank you very much for watching this episode, guys. I hope you all have enjoyed. If you have, then please do like, comment, subscribe, and share. And I shall catch you all in the next episode of The Witcher 2. Thanks again, guys. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.